All right, let's talk about array lists. Array lists have the word array in them for a reason, because the underlying data structure of an array list is an array. So if you're understanding what an array is, then you'll have a good understanding of what an array list is. An array list just takes a simple array and it adds a bunch of extra functionality to it. And over the next series of videos, we're going to be looking at what that functionality is. So to start with, let's just talk about what would an array list contain and what would it look like if it's containing elements. You could have a grocery list, a favorite songs list, users on a website, or maybe even your favorite composers. And that's what I've done here. I've created a list of my favorite composers, Beethoven, Mozart, Handel, Bach, and Kologi. Now, if I wanted to put them into an array list, the array list would look something like this. Every single element in the list having its own cell. And then there would be an index associated with every element in the cell. Notice that the index would start at 0, not at 1. So the list, more properly, would look like Beethoven 0, Kologi 4. And then I could access each element inside of the array list. So if I wanted to pull out Mozart or Bach, I would just say, what's the element in 1? Or what's the element in 3? So as I said, if you're familiar with arrays, it's going to look exactly like an array because the underlying data structure is an array. But how it does it and what extra it can do with it, that is what an array list is and what we're going to be looking at. In order to use an array list, an array list must be created or instantiated. And to do that, we're going to use the syntax array list list equals new array list. The first array list is going to be the name of the class. List is going to be the object name. And as long as it follows standard naming convention of objects, it can be pretty much anything you want it to be. New is going to allocate memory for the array list. And then the second array list is going to be the constructor of the array list class. Now, if we were just to have this as the only code inside of our main method, it would cause an error. The reason being is that if you're going to use an array list, it must be imported. So you'd have to write the statement at the top of your program, import java.yigtil.arraylist. Now, once that's done, we're still going to get a warning, not an error, but a warning. It might say something like, warning, unsafe or unchecked operations. Or, ArrayList is a raw type. References to generic type ArrayList E should be parameterized. And you say, well, what does that mean? Well, the keyword here is generic type. Generics allows a programmer to specify what type the ArrayList is going to be. So it would look something like this, as I'm showing you in the second declaration of our ArrayList. So if we want an ArrayList of strings, we would use these angle brackets with the type of data we want inside of the array list. So we would say array list string list. And that string right there is going to be our type parameter, saying what type of data or elements are going to be stored inside of our array list. We wouldn't just put it in one place. We would actually put it in two places. So right after array list, and then right after array list again, those are our type parameters inside of angle brackets telling us what type is inside the array list. And that is going to satisfy our need for generics. When using an array list, a programmer is not just going to use the data type string. They might also want to create an array list of integers, real numbers, or even some other type of object. So let's see what would happen if we tried to use the data type int inside of our array list. If we tried to do this, unfortunately, the result would be an error because int is one of Java's primitive data types, along with byte, short, long, char, float, double, and boolean. These primitive data types cannot be used inside of an array list. Array list must contain objects. Well, fortunately, there is a solution for this. Java has created wrapper classes with some very familiar names, byte, short, integer, long, character, float, double, and boolean. And the advantage to using a wrapper class is that they are objects and they can go inside of an array list. And you'll notice for every wrapper class, there is a corresponding primitive, or for every primitive, there's a corresponding wrapper class. Most of them are pretty simple to make the conversion. You would see if you wanted to use byte instead of lowercase b, you'd use uppercase b. 
This is true for short, long, float, double, and boolean. Int and char are the exceptions. So if we wanted to have integers inside of our array list instead of ints, we would have to put the word integer as opposed to just capitalizing the i in int. So if we do this above in our array list, we would see that the error would go away and we would be correct. Same thing with character. You can't just capitalize the same character. You actually have to spell out the word if you wanted to use a character rather than char. So the important thing to get from this is that ArrayList can only contain objects. But fortunately, Java has the wrapper classes and you can find the corresponding primitive to every wrapper class and vice versa. One more point I'd like to make about creating an ArrayList. Programmers love shortcuts and Java has added a small little shortcut when creating an ArrayList. If a programmer would like to take out the second type inside of the second type parameter, they can and the program will still run. So it is acceptable syntax to leave off the type in the second set of diamond or angle brackets, as we see in the example above. This example would compile just fine and it's a little bit shorter typing if you're having to create or instantiate an ArrayList object. Finally, I wanted to give you the big picture of ArrayList, and that is ArrayList are really a gateway data structure into understanding something called Java's Collections Framework, which is really just a group of data structures that store data in a certain way and are able to use data in a certain way. Java puts them all together for ease of use, but also their interconnection is extremely important to unlocking the power of all of them. An example of this is that an array list implements the list interface. Well, so does linked list. So that means that they're going to have a common set of methods that can be used and utilized together. And so I really don't want to get bogged down in the details right now of what the collection framework is or how interactions between array lists and other parts of the collection framework. I just want to introduce you to the idea and get you thinking about what is this collections framework and it's important to know that ArrayList is part of it because once you understand it and its interconnections you're going to be able to use ArrayList in a much more powerful and understandable way when programming. So let's sum up this introduction to ArrayList. ArrayList are really arrays when you get down to their most basic components. It's indexed starting at zero, going all the way to the length, just like an array is. The difference is going to be that ArrayList is going to add a whole bunch of functions that an array doesn't have. An ArrayList is created as an object. It's going to reference an array and some other things that we were talking about in the previous point. It is extremely important to use type parameters when you are instantiating an ArrayList. And when you use those type parameters, whether you say string or integer or character, you are using something called generics. ArrayList can only contain objects, and this feeds into the next point, which is wrapper classes are used instead of primitive data types in Java. So you couldn't use data types like int, char, lowercase boolean, anything like that, you have to use the wrapper class instead because ArrayList can only contain objects. And the final point I made is that ArrayList and isolation are great to understand, but where the power is really unleashed is understanding how are they part of this thing called Java's collection framework. And so if you really want to be an excellent programmer, understanding how an array list works with the bigger picture of the collections framework is really the way to unleashing the power of array lists. Array lists are powerful tools, and through the next series of videos, we're going to examine those tools in depth. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks for watching.